In this video, we're going to be talking about gaze shifting. This is one of the three major adaptation exercises that's used in vestibular rehab. The other two adaptation exercises being the VOR times one and the VOR times two. Now, generally speaking, when somebody comes into the clinic and they have issues with gaze stabilization, the go-to exercise to begin with is the VOR times one. However, some individuals may not be able to stabilize their gaze with the VOR times one, even at slow rates, or the symptoms that they get during the VOR times one might be so severe that it's unreasonable to give them the VOR times one to start with. And so what you do is you give them gaze shifting, which is a regression of the VOR times one. So a couple of examples where you might consider giving gaze shifting as an exercise. Number one, somebody who has a peripheral hypofunction but with severe symptoms. So generally speaking, patients with a peripheral hypofunction almost always have impaired gaze stabilization, which is why we generally give adaptation exercises. But if their symptoms are so severe that it precludes performing the VOR times one, as we mentioned before, then gaze shifting is certainly something you could try to promote gaze stabilization. Another example would be patients with a central vestibular dysfunction, in particular patients who had a traumatic brain injury and are suffering from post-concussion syndrome. So whether or not that comes from a motor vehicle accident, falls in the geriatric population, or other kinds of physical trauma, individuals with post-concussion syndrome often have impaired gaze stabilization. But because of the severity that they might have with their symptoms, they may not tolerate the VOR times one, and so you might also consider giving gaze shifting. So the basic setup here is we've got two X papers on the wall. Each X paper, remember, is just a post-it note with an X drawn in the center where the X is about half the length of your thumbnail. And the X papers are at a distance apart from one another in which the patient can still fixate on each X without the X blurring. So if the patient looks at this X, it doesn't blur, it doesn't move. They can look at this X, it doesn't blur, it doesn't move. As we'll see in a few minutes, if the X papers are further apart, then the patient would be required to fixate on each X through a larger ocular range of motion because the eyes would have to move further between the X papers. If the X papers are closer together, that makes it easier because the patient would be able to fixate through a smaller ocular range of motion. Then the patient's going to stand at a distance from the wall in which the patient can fixate on each X without the X's blurring. So this X doesn't blur, doesn't move. This X doesn't blur, doesn't move. And also, the X's are at eye level with the patient. Now the patient will almost always start off doing this in the seated position, but you can still progress this just like you do the VOR times one. You can progress from seated to standing, and even the progressions of base of support within standing, like a normal base of support to narrow base of support, etc., etc. So to gaze shift, the patient's going to perform alternating saccadic eye movements to an X, followed by movement of the head in the same direction. The major difference between gaze shifting and VOR times one, other than the fact that there's two X papers here, is that in the VOR times one, the eye movement occurs simultaneously with the head movement. In gaze shifting, the eye movement occurs first, and then the head movement occurs afterwards. So here's the basic idea. So to start, the patient's gonna begin with her head in left rotation, that's the blue arrow, and her gaze is fixated on the left X. So to begin, everything is left. Then first, she's gonna shift her eyes right. So her gaze is fixated on the right X, but her head is still rotated left. So shift eyes right, and she's gonna turn her head right. So now the head's rotated right, and her gaze is still fixated on the right X. Well then, she's gonna shift her eyes left. So her head's still rotated right, but now her eyes are fixated on the left X. And then finally, she's gonna turn her head left to meet her eyes. So gaze is still on the left X, but now her head is rotated to the left and we end up in the starting position. And you go through that over and over again for a predetermined amount of time, usually 30 seconds we start with and then work up to one to two minutes. So here's what gaze shifting looks like in real time. Shift eyes right, turn head right. Shift eyes left, turn head left. Shift eyes right, turn head right. Shift eyes left, turn head left. And so on and so forth, over and over again. Now, if the patient is doing this and the X are not staying in focus, then they're doing it at too high of a rate. So you should instruct them to slow it down. 
You might also consider moving the X papers a little closer together or even have the patient stand a little bit further back, assuming that their vision is good enough to still see the Xs. Remember, if the patient moves back a little bit, then they go through a smaller ocular range of motion between the two Xs. If they're closer up to the wall, then they're going to go through a larger range of motion uh, between the Xs, and that makes gaze fixation a little bit more challenging. Remember, the goal of adaptation exercise is to promote gaze stability. So if they're doing this and the X is still not staying in focus, it's moving, it's blurring, then they're probably doing it at too high of a rate, so you need to slow it down even more. But at some point, if the patient is gaze shifting at a high enough rate and the X's are still staying in focus, then that suggests that their gaze stabilization has improved and they can likely progress to the VOR times one and you can be done with this exercise. Remember, the gaze shifting is a regression of the VOR times one. So if this becomes too easy, you have to progress it. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.